Today we are installing Windows 8.1 after the end of support. Here we have a test system we're going to be installing Windows 8.1 on. To get started, verify the regional settings are correct and click Next. Then click the Install Now button. Enter your product key and click Next. Scroll to the bottom of the license agreement, mark the box for I accept the license terms, then click Next. Unless you are upgrading from a previous version of Windows, select the Custom option. The hard drive I'm going to be installing Windows on is in the list, so I can click the New button, which will create a new partition. We will be using the full size of the drive, so we can click Apply. We get a message that a system partition is going to be created, which is fine. And then we can click the Format button. Click on OK to confirm that data on the drive may be lost. Once the drive is formatted, click Next. This part is going to take several minutes, so now would be a good time to talk about how to get an installation disk image for Windows 8.1. As of the time of this recording, we are able to get an ISO directly from Microsoft. I'm using VirtualBox, so I can mount the ISO in the virtual machine. If you are using real hardware, you will either need to burn the ISO to a DVD or create a bootable USB flash drive. The download page for the ISO has a link to the Windows USB DVD download tool, which is broken. Unfortunately, there are no functional Wayback Machine snapshots available, so if we want to use this tool, we will need to get it from a third-party website like FileHippo. If you choose to go this route, this is what the tool looks like. Click the Browse button to point to the ISO file, then click Next. Then choose the media type, which in this case will be a USB device. Make sure the correct USB drive is selected, and click Begin Copying. One long and boring progress bar later, we have a bootable USB drive that we can install Windows 8.1 from. I frequently get questions about why I chose to use one tool over another. In this instance, there are two main reasons I didn't go with a different tool like Rufus. One, this isn't a tools comparison video. If that is something you would like to see, please, please, please leave it in a comment. I don't always know what you want to see and what you don't want to see. Two, this tool is linked on the same page you download the ISO from. While we are on the subject of the ISO, using the tool called NT Lite, we can modify the installation disk image to include things like Windows updates, device drivers, and modify Windows settings, as well as remove features. As a quick example, here we are in NT Lite, we can click the Add button in the upper left, and then click on Image. Browse for and locate the ISO we downloaded, and click Open. Now we should see the ISO file in the image list. If we click the arrow to the left to expand the category, it will show us the available versions of Windows 8.1 that we can mount. Choose the one that is correct for your license type, Click on it and click Load. This process will take several minutes to complete. Once the image finishes mounting, we can click on Updates in the left navigation bar. This page shows us what updates we are adding to the image once those are selected, as well as the updates that are already included in the disk image. Click the Add button in the upper left corner, 
and click on Latest Online Updates. This will produce a list of available updates for us to choose from. Mark the checkbox to the left of each update you would like to include in the disk image, and then click the Enqueue button. The left pane of the window will be populated with the selected updates. Verify the updates are correct, and then click on Apply in the left navigation bar. Then you will have a few options. From here, leaving them as default is fine for our purposes. Mark the checkbox to create ISO, and then click the Process button in the upper left corner. When done, we will have a new installation disk image that includes the selected updates. I want to go back to the license agreement for just a moment. It's, uh, yeah. So this section here says that if we're upgrading from a previous version of Windows, we are not able to use it or transfer the license of the previous version of Windows. According to this bit down here, we can't use the same Windows 8 license on a physical PC and a virtual machine. Now I need to go back and check on the license agreement for Windows 7 and see how it handled XP mode. If this is your first time using Windows 8.1, it's going to be inexperience. Is that the right word? In fairness, Windows 8.1 did address a lot of issues with Windows 8. The start menu is back. There is a setting that allows you to boot to the desktop, and it is generally easier to navigate the operating system with a keyboard and mouse. If you're not familiar with the history of Windows 8, it's essentially a tablet interface, which did not function for desktop users which is why Windows 8 was very quickly replaced with Windows 8.1. The installation is now complete, and the PC will reboot. We are now in what Microsoft calls the out-of-box experience. This is essentially a wizard that will allow you to select some settings. I'm going to switch to the green color scheme, and then we can give the PC a name, and then click the Next button. For this installation, I'm going to click on the button to use Express Settings. However, there are two points here that concern me. The first is, help improve Microsoft software, services, and location services by sending us info. It doesn't specify what information is being sent, and that could literally mean any information. The second point is, let Windows and Apps use your name, account picture, and advertising ID, and request your location from the Windows location platform. I'm not keen on having to sign into Windows with my Microsoft account, so I'm going to select Create a Local Account from this screen. If you chose not to modify the installation disk image by adding Windows updates to it, this part of the out-of-box experience is capable of checking Windows Update and downloading them. At the time of this recording, there are no issues with the Windows Update feature in Windows 8.1. It is working properly. No additional action is required to get security updates through the Windows Update feature. Here we are at the desktop. We have completed the installation for Windows 8.1.